Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamari Four here once again, and we're here to review episode two of season two of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Now, mind you, today, today has been one of them days, y'all. I have been really legitimately running around my chicken cut, with, with my chicken cut off, with my head, with, well, y'all know the expression I'm trying to say, like a chicken with his head <laughs> cut off, because I'm, I'm getting ready to move tomorrow, and I'm going to have a heartburn. Hold on, yes, you know what? I'm sorry to be rude, just get up, but I need to get some water because I've been having some heartburn issues going on all damn day. I think I just need to get me some water, have me some nearby. I should have did this before I pressed record, my bad, but you know, it is what it is. So we go, <laughs> we'll go ahead and get into this episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Now mind you, like I said, this season has actually been showing a hell of a lot more promise than last season. Shit, even Atlanta for that matter. So, this week we finally bring in Soulja Boy, and I hate when these people on these love and hip hop shows be talking about, hey, it's your boy, Soulja Boy, dropping hits, making that money, this, that, and the fourth. I'm like, okay, look, if you were really dropping hits and making this alleged money that you speak of, you wouldn't be on love and hip hop franchise. You wouldn't be paying your money to Mona Scott Young, okay? You know who people who are dropping hits and making money? Beyonce, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, and them. Those are people who are dropping hits and making money. If you were really dropping hits and making money, you would not be on this Love & Hip Hop franchise. Next, Fizz and his, you know, fine down low ass gonna go in the, in the theater. I guess, is Soulja Boy doing rehearsal for a tour? Or was he performing? Because there wasn't nobody there. I was kind of confused as to what the whole setting was supposed to be. And Nia was in there. And him and Soulja talk about, okay... You know, soldiers with Nia, allegedly, his main bitch, <laughs> okay, that's his main girl. Y'all know how that whole term go with main bitches. You know, there's a main bitch, there's always going to be some side pieces. So, in what would we figure out later on in this episode? So, he talks about how, you know, him and Nia are supposed to be together, and Fizz is enjoying the single life. But I'm thinking, like, well, wasn't Fizz and Nikki dating last season? Or did they just, or we're just going to pretend like that not happened? That's we're just going to pretend like that didn't happen? Okay, Mona, we'll do that. And so they go on this whole thing about, well, you know, I'm trying to enjoy the single life. And Soldier's Boy like, yeah, you better enjoy the single life because, you know, you know, it is what it is. And he's like, so what about you? What about you and Nia? And she's like, man, you know, Nia's my main girl and everything. But she knows, like, when I'm on this whole road thing. Now, mind you, is Soldier? do y'all ever hear about Soldier Boy performing shows anywhere else? I've never even, I've been wondering if Soldier Boy is even still alive. Okay. Like, maybe they'd be doing some local-ass shows and maybe, like, school homecomings or something. But they won't be talking about I'll be on the road, I'll be on the road, but I don't ever hear nothing about shit they be doing. I don't know nobody to be talking about shit they be doing. I don't be seeing footage from nobody, uh, uh, you know, being at a show or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, where are these shows that you speak of? Anywho, he says that Nia understands that when he's on the road, he does him or you know oh we don't have to go look for bitches bitches come to us now see here's the thing i feel like i i understand when you're excuse me in that particular lifestyle or you're in this particular business yes there's gonna be bitches yes there's gonna be vagina thrown at you on a constant basis but if you're supposed to be with somebody that you claim to love i just don't see how that would be an issue you know I, maybe it's just how I look at relationships, but people just be like, well, I mean, it's just there, you know, I just gotta fuck it. No, you ain't gotta do that shit. So, I don't, and then she's talking about, oh, she understands. Something tells me that Nia really doesn't understand. She just kind of tolerates, which, I mean, that's her decision to make, but, you know, it is what it is. I don't want to say that she understands. Yeah. All right, girl. So, next we get to this next scene with Rich Dollars and Monice, right? So hold on, let me let me position this in front so I don't gotta look to the side. <laughs> so Rich sets this whole thing up for Moniz, these flowers. I guess he's in like some apartment that he's renting for a week or something. Now my thing is, so he's coming, he was coming into town 
I guess he didn't want to come stay with her. I guess that's what it is. But he's so in love. Like, if you're so in love with somebody, why would you pay money to rent out a separate space? I guess so you don't have to be in there with your child? I'm not sure, but that whole thing just seemed kind of weird. If you in town only for a week, but you just couldn't stay with the person you're supposed to be in a uh, seven-month relationship with, apparently, and we're supposed to be so eager to get to each other after being long distance and FaceTiming, but yet when you come in town, you stay somewhere else. No, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense to me. You're going to stay with me. That's the whole... Anyway, again, that could be how I view the shit, not how necessarily everybody else views it. So... Oh, I feel like my face dark. Hello. Come on, lighting. <laughs> um, so he gets this whole flowered, you know, romantic setting uh, uh, worked up here. And so but Monique starts dropping all these heavy ass topics. Now, he just wants to, you know, kind of keep it light. She's talking meet my family, meet my son, uh, vasectomies. He's like, oh, bitch. <laughs> You're talking about snipping my balls. And he's just like, wait, wait. <laughs> he was like, you know, I was, I was, and I was loving you and everything. We was all cool. But now you're talking about, you know, stopping my soldiers from marching. Like you trying to take away my manhood, allegedly. And I'm kind of like, you mean, that is kind of like a extreme ass shit to do. Like, I know she's like, you know. We talked about, you know, kids and how I don't want any more. So you going to cut your, uh, you have a vasectomy. I'm like, bitch, what? Who agreed to this? And I, I feel like, a conversation like that, if you know that you're the one who doesn't want children anymore, I feel like it should be you that should be the one that should go through the process of uh, making it so you don't have any kids anymore. Why don't you get your tubes tied? Why do I have to get a vasectomy? <laughs> Shit. I mean, what if, this, what if this thing doesn't work out? What if I do want to have children? You know, like, I can't do it now because I have a vasectomy. But if you know for a fact that whether it's me or the next guy that you ain't having no more kids then you need to go ahead and get your tubes tied. I don't see the problem with that. So, <laughs> I was like, Rich Dollar was looking like, uh, the fuck? And now, and now he was looking all googly at him, uh, Moniz, but now he's kind of looking at her like, you know? <laughs> so, we move on to this next scene, right? Where Tierra and Nikki wants to uh, put together this fashion show. Uh, blazers and lingerie and they want to get together with this girl I guess named Nas who's supposed to bring models to the fashion show what have you pretty much the bullshit storyline that tries that Mona puts together to get the the two messy bitches with, to, to introduce this new messy bitch that's pretty much all this fashion show is we pretty much forgot that there was even a fashion show happening like did y'all remember at the end of the scene that there was a fashion show happening <laughs> we wanted to get to the mess so anyway, it's this new girl, or this new chick named Nas. Damn, I got this heartburn. Girl. New chick named Nas, who's apparently been on and off with Soldier Boy. And so, of course, Nikki and Tierra are like, ooh. Because I guess, you know, Nikki is cool with uh, uh, Nia. I don't know if Tierra and Nia are cool. I can't really remember. Y'all know this cast is so that goddamn big. You just can't keep up. <laughs> But she's like, yeah, like, you know, we just fucked two weeks ago. And, you know, me and uh, Nia used to be best friends. and uh, But now, blah, blah, blah. And da, da, da. I'm like, okay. All right, Mona. I see what you're doing. You're trying to give Nia more of a storyline. Because, girl, Lord knows, she was boring as fuck last season. All she was doing was getting pregnant. Was she? Is she pregnant? Did she have a baby? I don't remember now. Y'all leave that in the... <laughs> Because I remember she was, she thought she was getting pregnant uh, when Soldier Boy was kind of ignored her. But I don't remember if she had a miscarriage or was it a false positive. I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> that's her introduction into the storyline. So Nas is going to be the bitch that's still messing around with Soldier Boy. And Nia's going to try to, you know, try to fuck her up. So next we get to The Bay. Next, we get to the Bay, Mylon Christopher Gordy, 
And so him and Miles at this strip club throwing dollars on bitches. <laughs> Putting up this whole front. And Miles, or not Miles, I keep wanting to call him Miles. I don't know why that's so much easier than Milan. But um, he tries to say, like, yeah, we throwing up dollars and all this other shit. But I was just looking at him and I just want to lean over and just like kiss him and hug him and be affectionate. But I couldn't do that because he's not out. And it's just kind of getting old. And so... He gets into, you know, they get into the car and they talk or whatever. And he's like, so, like, what's up? Like, you know, this whole time, you know, like, what if we just sat there and kissed in front of everybody? Like, would it, what would it, wouldn't it be nice for us to just be ourselves, you know, in this public setting? And Miles is kind of like, man, like, you know, I can't do that. You know, I kind of want to move at my own pace. Now, I'm not going to sit and be insensitive to, you know, Miles' position. Like, I guess uh, when you have a life outside or I guess meaningful relationships outside of, you know, your gay lifestyle that you want to make sure are maintained, you um, you don't want to just throw it out there and just put all those things at risk. And, you know, especially if you feel like it would negatively affect, you know, your loved one's life. I get that. I totally understand that. But... At the same time, the way that Miles is talking to Milan about how he feels he's not ready, he's, uh, you know, still trying to get comfortable, he's not, she keeps using, like, not sure, still getting there, like, but he says he's supposed to be in love, and they're supposed to be in this relationship for a long time. Like, those issues about how you're being comfortable and all that stuff, I believe would have been worked out towards the beginning like the way that y'all talking y'all talking like y'all just now started to uh become official it just seems kind of late in the game to be having these kind of conversations but milan wants him to move in and it's like you know you know what's up with that and miles is like you know i'm not sure if i really want to take that step with you and i'm like i mean i just can't I mean, I guess it's me looking through my own lens, but I just, like, if somebody, like, you know, Milan was like, hey, bae, move in with me. I'm like, okay, um, when when do I pack my shit? Where do you need me to put my stuff? Where's the damn, uh, <laughs> where's the storage unit for my furniture so I can put it? You know, I'll be all for it. But Milan's want to talk about, oh, he's still getting comfortable i'm like look you have you have literally been fucking me for months and yet i'm still trying to get comfortable with you we've gotten comfortable on levels that most people will probably never ever understand so that whole getting comfortable nonsense i was with milan like bitch what you still getting comfortable what <laughs> what you mean <laughs> you know that just sounded like some bullshit so i'm still praying that you know milan gets his happy ending because he's beautiful and he has a beautiful spirit Miles, get your shit together. <laughs> so, we get to this little fashion show with uh, Tierra and her blazers called Blaze Hers, which is corny as fuck, Tierra. What the hell? Anywho, and Moniece is sitting up here with the 4th of July on top of, on top of her head. I'm like, what the hell going on? <laughs> Ooh, job just burping. Girl, I'm telling y'all, I'm going through it today. I don't know what's going on. And Amber is sitting up here looking, okay, all right. <laughs> I don't watch other people's reviews, and everybody pretty much said the same thing. Like, this bitch is busted. This bitch is busted, crusted from the top to the bottom. Like, I'm sitting up here looking all up in her neck for Adam's apple and shit, because they said she looked like a goddamn drag queen. And it's just a mess. Girl, they... They could have... And I mean... I know that the storyline is probably fake as hell. They could have found somebody else to take her place. Like, somebody more feminine looking. But anyways, that's not the point. Um, Tierra says she wants to set up a, uh, a meeting with Princess. Even though she just had a little heart-to-heart -heart with her. She's kind of like, after she left the situation, she was kind of like, wait a minute. Fuck her. <laughs> Fuck her and, her and Ray J's feelings. Like, they both did me wrong, so I'm just going to... I'm going to play nice and be friendly towards her and any advantages that she wants to give to me while we have this friendly thing going on, I'll use it. So, 
you know, <laughs> so she's pretty much just like, you know, keep your enemies close and your friend, what's the, what's the shit? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Yeah, there it is. And we figure out that, I guess, why uh, uh, Moniz doesn't like Princess and it's because, you know, she's always been Team Tierra. I don't know if it's just been so long between the seasons that I just don't remember, but I'm like, I don't remember Moniz and Tierra ever even really interacting for real, for real last season, but I probably just don't remember the shit, but either way. <clears throat> Nia and Nikki, you know, Nikki just had that meeting with that Nas chick about, you know, that, uh, about her fucking Soulja Boy still on the regular. And, of course, they had to go to some random shop that's empty that they had to empty out for filming so that Nikki can be like, hey, I just met up with this new bitch for Dallas with Tierra with who says she was still fucking Soulja Boy. And, of course, Nia was like, oh, really? I have a storyline now? Okay, cool. That's pretty much how that scene <laughs> That's pretty much how that scene went, though, like, in all honesty. So... Rich and Moniz, Moniz is coming out the goddamn pool, yet still full face of makeup on. Mona, I just feel like you be insulting my intelligence sometimes. But anyway, we're just going to pretend. Like I said, let's just pretend like Tinashe, okay? So she gets out the pool, and they sitting up there, um, <clears throat> and she keeps on referring to always having sex with him. Like, I feel like... Every time they start filming, they either just fucked or are on their way to fuck. <laughs> Have y'all noticed that? It's just kind of like, okay, is this what the relationship is based off of? This one's got Rich Dollar so allegedly in love. <laughs> so, Rich mentions that, okay, yeah, we're supposed to be in this relationship or whatever, but there's this tattoo. And, and, you know, Monice explained that the tattoo was like her first boyfriend, the first person she had sex with, and blah, blah, blah. And, okay, she's like, I mean, it was never a problem before. So I'm like, okay, so why is it so much of a problem now? But since I really want to make this thing work, I'm going to, you know, co go and cover up this tattoo. But in the meantime, I'm going to expect some things, you know, from him. And just like I've just mentioned, as soon as the scene was over, they went to go fuck. A, a snapback session. Is that what they call it now? Snapback sessions? That's what y'all call it? Y'all kids these days call it <laughs> snapback sessions to fuck? Alright. So, we move on to Princess and Tierra, and they pretty much talk about how, you know, he she's one foot out the door as far as the relationship, and uh, they, uh, Princess is like, well, maybe we can actually like be friends, and of course Tierra's like, yeah, we could probably be friends, but of course in the back of her mind, she's like, bitch, I'm just gonna be friendly. I I mean I'm still remembering that y'all you know full of shit, but I'm just gonna be friendly. <laughs> okay, that's the difference here. Which we still find out later on that they still fight again over the same shit. So for right now they're gonna be cordial. And she's like, um, you know you need to get out. Like she said, she's been in the house for two years. I'm like, how you be in the house for two years? The fuck? You ain't got family. You ain't got you ain't got no other friends. You ain't what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. So, Tierra invites Princess to, you know, to go out with her. They're going to have a good time, have drinks, or what have you. So, once again, Bay comes on the screen, Milan, and he's sitting up there cooking, looking sexy as fuck, uh, setting up a plate and table for him and Miles to have this date. And he's like, you know, where are you at? Like, he's late. And Miles talking about, oh, Milan's blowing up my phone. We, you know, we're supposed to have a date, but sometimes I don't want him tracking my every move or whatever. And what he doesn't understand is, you know, I have relationships that I've had that I still don't you know, want to keep before coming out. Ooh, sorry. My nose each. Ooh. Sorry about that. Uh, there are other relationships that I've had. Wait. <coughs> Is it open? <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay. I'm back. So he meets up with, you know, the drag queen Amber and her daughter, who is apparently a, like a daughter of feet. <coughs> Ooh, damn. Ooh, my bad, y'all. 
So she meets up with uh, Amber and uh, Zoe, which is Amber. Yeah, Zoe, which is Amber's daughter, who's like a uh, who he's like a father figure for, since you know her father walked out on him and whatnot, probably because she thought that Amber looked like a man. But he feels like, oh, I don't know how coming out would affect them and this, that, and the fourth. And my thing is, I mean, it probably would affect her, but. As far as Amber, I'm talking. I'm not not Amber. Yeah, Amber, I'm talking about. It probably would affect her. But I mean, if people love you, if people say that they genuinely love you, and if you come to them and say, "Hey, this is who I am, and this is who makes me happy," and if they have a problem with that, then I feel like they probably didn't really too much care for you in the beginning. That's just how I feel about it. So, if you feel like you can't talk to the person, you can't even, you know, I mean, you may not agree. But for you to just stop loving the person and for the relationship to suffer, I feel like there probably wasn't that much love there to begin with. That's that's just how I feel about it. So <clears throat> I kind of feel like that's fucked up. And he never really did respond to Milan's Chris uh, to Milan's uh, text about their date or whatever. So I'm like, babe, you know, just just just, just text me, text me. I look, I'll be right there. But like, babe, what you cook? You know, you, you did a good job, baby. <laughs> That would just be me. I'm just saying. <clears throat> so, Princess gets in her freakum dress, okay, with no bra. She walks out in a little blue dress with a little overnight bag. And, of course, just as she's walking out, Ray J comes. Mona, we ain't stupid. Again. Anywho. <laughs> um, Ray J walks out, and he's like, you know, why are you playing games? Like, why are you doing what you, what you doing? And he's like, or she's like, you know, I'm about to go out. And I'm about to go have some fun. He's like, why you have a, 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 a overnight bag? He's like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to come home. And he's going to be like, that bothers me. Well, bitch, you know what bothered me? With the fucking apartment and seeing you grabbing the whole um, stripper's asses in, in the goddamn apartment that you told me that you was going to get rid of. That bothered me, but you ain't too much giving two, two fucks about that down, did you? Oh, okay. <laughs> So, Princess is like, yeah, okay, whatever, that's, mm, whatever. <clears throat> and so, he's like, you about to go in there and change. And she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, who you think you are, my daddy or something? Like, if you ain't acting right, if you go, if you can go out and do what you do with your little APT parties, then I have a right to go out and at least leave the motherfucking house and go hang with Tierra and have some drinks, bitch. And Ray J's like... Why is Tierra talking on Princess and this, that, and the fourth, and blah, blah, blah. Ray J, you a fuckboy. You are the one of the definitions of a fuckboy, okay? <laughs> you you want to be able to do whatever it is that you want to do at your, on your own time, at your own pace, but then expect everybody else to cater to your ass. And that's not how this shit works, okay? If you're going to sit there and still keep this APT party and not, you know, keep Princess informed about what you was doing with this part, with this apartment, then for her to go out, then she has every right to go out and do what she wants to do. If you're going to do what you want to do. <laughs> That's just how it works. But. We get to Moniz in this tattoo shop. <clears throat> and her and Rich Dollar. So. They at the point where. Okay. We're, we're getting ready to do the tattoo. We want to cover it up. I guess make it a butterfly or a flower or what have you. And so. They get to there. And, and then it gets to the point. Okay. It's like. Okay. We're about to get this tattoo covered up. But before we get to this. Uh. Are you going to move in? And he's like, what? What are you talking about? Like, why should I have to move in? And it becomes this whole discussion like a tattoo is not as, I guess, this, on the same weight as moving in. But Bonice made a good point. It's like, okay, the tattoo is forever. Like, me moving in, like, if two people move in, you could always move out. Okay? That's, you know, but the tattoo is forever. Like, I get this covered up. Like, this is going to forever be here. All right? So, it just seems like, thus far, Rich wants Monice to do and, you know, cater to him and whatever he wants to make him feel comfortable, but yet, he's not really showing signs of trying to do what she wants. Now, mind you, she is kind of asking for a whole lot at once, as far as, like, the whole, excuse me, vasectomies and all that stuff going on, but, you know, just... Moving in, I mean, if y'all are supposed to have been FaceTiming or 
long distance relationship. I mean, you may not want to move in just yet because I, I think this is the first time they see seeing, not the first time they're seeing each other, but the first time I guess they've seen each other in like six, seven months. I don't know. It, it all depends on where they are at their, in their relationship. You can never really tell. But um, it just kind of seems like he's she's more into it than he is. And he's just kind of like in it for the publicity of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. <laughs> that's, that's just what it looks like. And so, but I guess she still went on with the tattoo. So Ray J and Tierra meet up. Now, I'm like, okay, this further shows that Ray J is a fuckboy. Because he's like, um, Tierra's meeting up with Princess and Princess is acting out and all this other shit. And then Sierra gets there and is just like, look, you don't look happy. I talked to her. She don't look happy. Like, you know, what's up? <laughs> and then she's, uh, Ray J wants to go on like, you know, I don't like this and this, that, and the fourth. But in that whole conversation, what I want to talk about was he tried to drop the line. So if I ever called you, would you pick up? Or would you come? I'm like, and Tierra gave him that epic side eye like, what you talking about? Like, so you just gonna really have this girl in limbo. Like, no matter what you do to her, you just gonna still expect, not even just her, but princess. You feel like you can just do whatever the fuck you wanna do, and these girls are just supposed to be like, just supposed to love you and do whatever you want them to do. Like, this not how this shit works. Damn. <laughs> I'm just like, some y'all just need to, uh, somebody just needs to lash into Ray J like he deserves because this type of behavior is not cool. Brandy, come get your little brother. <laughs> come get him because he's in the pair making a fool of himself on national television. Talking about, is you going to still come if I call you? Tierra, you will be a fool. And I feel like, Tierra, you going to do it. I feel like you are going to do it because I feel like that's what you and Princess fight about later. I tell you. But anyways, the last scene of this episode, y'all, is this whole boot camp thing that not this Nas girl was supposed to be running that Tierra and Nikki were invited to, but Nikki being messy invited Nia and April to. I don't know. All the bitches that are on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood are pretty much here, damn near, except for Monice and them. <clears throat> so they get together and. You know, Nas is like, you know, I got to talk to you. And Nia's like, For, about what? And then he started getting, he started getting into a heated argument, talking about, I'm going to punch you in your face if you're talking about my man and this, that, and the fourth. And uh, Nia starts talking about, get your teeth fixed, bitch. I'm just like, Nia, girl, you, um, you can't be talking about how nobody's mouth be looking, girl, because the way you be talking with that lisp. I don't want to hear you say nothing about nobody's mouth, all right? Now, mind you, the makeup artist did make you look a lot better this season. I'm going to give you that. But don't, don't be sitting there talking about nobody getting nothing fixed until you get your own situation. You know, you need to get a, a retainer or something. <laughs> something need to be going on for you to be talking like this, all right? Don't, don't do that. Now, I mean, the other girl, nah, she does need to get some, she could afford some dental work, but, I mean, who doesn't, all right? Everybody could afford a little something, something, especially if you're going to be on TV, you know what I'm saying? But don't, don't, don't go too far. And I just want to see, I want to see Nia fight. I think that'd be interesting. <laughs> so that's going to be allegedly Nia's storyline. I'm going to see what Soldier Boy has to say about all of this when he finally gets put into the mix. But that was episode two of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, y'all. This shit is getting really, really good. And I'm really, really loving it so far. Damn, this is a long review. This shit almost half an hour. For those of y'all who stuck around, I appreciate it. <laughs> I really, really do. Thank you guys so much for watching and sharing. Make sure you, uh, to all my new subscribers, thank you guys so much for coming along for this ride. We're going to keep on going. I'm sorry I couldn't do Bad Girls last week. It just, when I tried to do it, it just started, it, 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 it just wasn't working. I couldn't get the recording the way I wanted to get it, and it just became too late. But we're going to do it tomorrow, though. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Like, share, subscribe. Jamar, Washington, Washington, Washington.